second
What does that mean to you? Uh, I mean, it's clear cut and hard to remember that. Mm -hmm. and I'm Basically, I don't okay. think I can, I can invoke my right to silence at any given time. You can ask one time. question, skip two questions, and answer one question. At any time, I can say, I would rather have a waiver. Perfect. Perfect, absolutely. This is your waiver of rights. Can you read that out loud? I've read the statement of my rights and I understand what my rights are. I'm willing to make a statement and answer and answer questions. I do not want a lawyer at this time. I understand and know what I am doing. No promises or threats have been made to me and no pressure or coercion um, of any kind has been used against me. Let's just start with basics. Where do you live? I live in Maryland, Georgia. Okay, what's your address? Uh, 1212 Winds Ridge. It's Whiskey Yankee, November, November, Echo Sierra, Ridge Circle. And who's there with you? My wife and my dad. What's your wife's name? Leanna, L E A N N A. And it's her last name? It is. Well, the reason I ask that is you understand today's society. I understand. Okay. Come on. Common law, might just be why you know, I don't have a correct enough, but I guess I'll put you in first real quick. 127. 127. And what's your phone number? 205 792 6806. Okay. And what service is it through? It's AT&T. Alright, so what plan is done with you first? It's 514-84. And what's her phone number? 205. Seven nine two five one two eight. Okay. And your son's name is Cooper. It is. Okay. What's Cooper's middle name? Mills. M I L L S. Yes. What's his date of birth? Uh, eight two twelve. Okay. Ross, just kind of run me through your morning today, and you know my condolences. Um, there's some kind of things that have gone through. Just run me through what happened starting with um, when you woke up this morning. I woke up. Normal day. My wife and I. We're in a bed together. She left work um, at approximately 7.15. Instead of going from here to here, 
I went straight to work, which is out turned on the Cumberland, and I drove down Cumberland Boulevard. I went to work as if he wasn't even in the back. And I probably didn't even hear him because he falls asleep really easily when, when you drive the car. And I went to work. And what happened at work? I had a normal day. I had a um, normal work day. I had no meeting. Um, what time did you get to work? About 9.30. How do you clock in? I don't. You get to work about 9.30 and what do you do? Um, I go straight to my desk and I sit down and I check my emails and I, you know, I have banter with the guys I work with and mm -hmm. that's pretty much my day. I have a open my morning meeting every day at 10.30. I have no meeting. Um, so, you know, day's going good. Um, lunchtime rolls around. I got some guys that I work with across the street. They came and picked me up. Um, we went to Public State Lunch. They took me back and dropped me off. Um, um, and then I finished the work day, and then we had plans to go to a movie. Me and the two guys on lunch with we had plans to go to a movie at 5 o'clock. Which is where I was going. I was going to try to get there about 4:20, 4:30, just to kind of beat the. If there's an after work crowd trying to go to a movie or anything like that, I thought I'd get there a little early. And as I was turning out, I was driving down. Um,
people told me to. That's your paper. No, it wasn't paper. It was um, oh, yeah. I, I have no idea of what you mailed that thing. Um, she told me to get off the phone. Mm -hmm. And I promptly cursed at her because I was losing my mind. Um, uh, and then So did you get anybody on the phone? No. Anybody. Okay. Because I heard you talking on the phone like you were talking to somebody when they walked up. And you understand it's a lot of things going on. It's just easy to forget. So, did you talk to anybody on the phone? No. No? Got anybody on the phone. Okay. What kind of phone is it? It's an iPhone 5. Is it passcode? It is. Can I get the passcode? Zero. Uh, I don't know what the passcode is. It's biometric. Oh, okay. Um, okay. What is that? I can't remember. Do I get a pass so I can call my brother? And yeah, I'm going to let you get numbers and anything out of it. Okay. Um, I'll get a copy. Let's start back when you say you woke up and it was a normal day. On a normal day, do you take Cooper to daycare? Uh, is that your normal person? Who's the person that normally takes Cooper to daycare? <laughs> I would say that most of the time I take him to daycare. Well, it's it's there's no routine. It's who's going to who has to be at work early. I don't know. We cut. It's hey, when you take him today, it's never. It's really a flip of the coin. I would I don't I, don't, I wouldn't even think that I take him the majority of the time. I have no idea. Well, it's Wednesday now. We took him Monday. <laughs>
How is Cooper doing development? Like, can you talk? Yep. That's my real name. Nine and two years old. Screams at me. So it talks, walks, talks, walks. Normal child. The car seat you're using. Yes. How do you put him in that car seat? What do you mean? Like facing forward, facing back. Yeah. It's a rear facing car seat. Okay. And that's the one running in this one used for him all the time? Uh, not all the time. We, we just switched. And that car. She has a car seat in her car that's forward facing. We used to, the way the, the car seat works is there's a base. Right? You have children? And you know, actually, there's a base. You remove the car seat from the base, you put it back on. We had two bases. And so, when we were getting, we would just swap the car seat in and out. Um, we just bought a new one that's forward facing. It was in my car. Um, and she was using the rear facing car seat. She was going to Alabama for work. She was taking in. And we, I gave her the four facing car seat because it's more comfortable for him. And I put the rear facing car seat in the car. And that was well, two weeks ago. Can I use the restroom again? You certainly may.
lot of times they try to from that instead of wanting to breakfast. Because they have a big party to hop on for breakfast and they'll feed in there. But I just wanted to tell them today. Okay. So, you can, um, you said breakfast at the daycare is 4 8 30? Yeah. Okay. Is that normally feed in there? Yeah. So, okay. so, two or three times a month, me and him will go to breakfast together. But normally, does he eat breakfast? Do you ever eat it at the house, or is it always in the daycare? If we eat at the house, it's, it's, it's pretty rare. We, he did one time this past week, I believe, and he still ate breakfast at the daycare, even though we got there about 8 45, 1 o'clock. But he had, bre he had breakfast this week at home um, in our bed with us. We walked and watched his cartoons together. Okay. So, what's the cost time for breakfast at the daycare? I think 8 30. Did they just let him go ahead and eat anything for you that way? Yeah, they had extra leftover, and there was, already, there was a kid still eating, so they let him. Okay. And when he fed out the table, like he wanted to eat some more, so they did. Okay. So, what time do you normally get to work? Uh, anywhere between 8.45 and 9.30. 8.45. So, there's no set time? I don't have a time not to be at work, no. Okay. Nor do I have a time I have to leave. Okay. So, I guess your salary then is just saying. Yeah. Thank you. 
Okay.
you said that one of the only things you guys did together was go to Chick fil A. Right. As a, as just me and him. Yeah. That was our that was our thing. Usually like if we if I do anything it's gonna be with a lot we'll go to Kill Song out and then we'll go hiking and um we we yeah, we'll we'll go to the pool together. And I like to take him out. I like to take him out. So it's 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 well he's he's a very young child. What'd you pay for Chick fil A? Where'd you pay? The Alabama credit union. It's located in Tuscaloosa, Alabama. The home branch is on Ryan Road. Right. Because I got the house, I don't know what to do right now. I really don't. I'm, I'm, I'm an absolute loss for everything. Why do you think it happened? I'm going to let you just, you know, explain to me how this happened. How do you, how do you think this happened? I have, there are occasions where in the morning after I drop him off, I'll go to Chick fil A because it's, it's on the way. And uh, all those times I'll always get to drop through and never go inside by myself. And I'll leave Chick fil A and when I turn out of Chick fil A, I'll turn on the car on. We'll take that U-turn and I'll go straight to it. And I, just, I don't know if my mom just said that's what we're doing today. So just go to work. So I never think of my car by myself. And I just watched news reports. There was a news report of a guy who did this, just like me. And now he's an advocate for when you park, you turn around and look at you. And I've been doing that because I, the, the worst fear of, for, my, for me is to leave my son in a hot car. And then just recently there was a vet on, 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 on the internet who, you know, said even if you've got your windows rolled down. And regardless, you know, I'm going to show you how hot it can be in the car. You think you can just leave your pets in the car and hold your window, hold your windows down. Yeah, you can't do that. I don't want to watch that. I'm going to be terrible if my son was in the car. I would hate that. Um, when I was working for Tuscaloosa Police, we had a canine officer. And he was in the car for 10 minutes. Uh, the the exhaustion immediately closed. Um, had the windows on. Um, black suburban. Um, so that happens. So I'm, I'm aware. I just, I just can't believe. Go ahead. Where, where's the car sitting in your car? I haven't seen the car. It's in the middle. It's in the middle? It's in the middle. Okay. Well, what are you going to take to work with you? My bag. What, what kind of bag is it? It's a, just a, a over the shoulder. A okay. top bag. Right. Where do you keep that in the car? I'll put it in the front seat next to you. So I guess I should put, I should put it in the back seat every time. Was that in the front seat today? Yeah. You took it into work with you? I did. It's got my, it's got my, my work stuff. You said the car seat that you have there currently is a... Uh, one of those that has the base, you know, it locks in. Yeah. Okay. But, um, you know, I had two of those. Yeah. Okay. Two bases. I'm going to use the other one. She's good because she's got a permanent car seat here. Okay. So what do you do with it when he's not in it? Well, I'll leave it in the car. I have no reason not to remove it. So you put him, you get him in the, in the back seat and you put him in the back And then I get in and I get him out. How does he fit in that car seat? It's a little bit bigger than the car seat. He fits down. It's a, it's a, it's a Kiko Keyfit 30, so it's up to 30 pounds, and he is roughly 22, 23. So we, we weren't aware of using the car seat up until, because uh, he's, 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 even for almost 10, he's still a little, he's a little bit for his age. Um, so based on everything that we've read um, regarding the safety of a rear-facing car seat with an almost 10-year-old, um, we deem that that was still adequately safe. Um, given his weight, his height, um, and we did measurements to make sure that the, the shoulders were, were in front of the place and the harness in front was, was, was fine. Um, so we were, we were comfortable still using the car seat based on the information that we were, that we were given. Okay. Why did you guys go to Alpac? What, like, for college? Well, for, you say, some of the Oh, oh, she works in Alabama once a month. She works at a, she does a side job as a, a dietitian for a, a, a nursing home in 
um, in uh, Marion, Alabama. I think I haven't heard of it, that's no surprise. Thank you. 